Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. Well, actually, I'm in my son's room, and today we're going to build this platform bed with the help of the shop dog, Ziva. Check it. Alright, so since I have a truck and I can carry my full seats of plywood, I brought full seats of plywood at home. But if you can't get a, you don't have a truck and you can't get the full seats home, have your home store cut it for you into 16 inch sections. But I'm going to use my Bora straight edge here, and I'm going to show you how to do that. Because if you mark it off at 16 inches and you go to cut, you're not going to you're not going to get the actual 16 inch piece that you need because you got to account for the sole of the, the the saw. So what I do is I measure from the outside of the blade over, and it gives me right at five and a sixteenth of an inch. So, since I'm going to be cutting this way with the fat part of the blood, the fat part of the sole against the fence, what I want to do is I want to measure over eleven and a sixteenth here. I'm going to measure eleven sixteenths, eleven and a sixteenth up here. Then when I line up my my bore track straight edge on here, I know that when I cut it, I'll have exactly 16 inches. You'll see in a second. All right, you've seen me so far use the bore clamp rail, which I like a lot because it's sturdy, it's quick, it's easy to use. But it's $117, and not a lot of people have that kind of money to spend on tools for the shop that they use occasionally. The other option I used was this um, level, or this straight edge system. You can get it at Home Depot. I think it's like $20 at Home Depot. But the other thing that I'm going to use, Zero Clearance Guy. Um, I made this for uh, Penny to use on one of her projects. But DIY Tyler made a video on how to make these and I'll leave the link in the description up here in the corner. But anyways, it takes all the guesswork out of how much you need to add or subtract from your board to get the actual cut. Because as soon as you make it, you cut it, you know that that's your cut line for your saw. So I'm going to show you how that works and then we'll move on. So now our next step, I'm using the plans by the way, I'm using the plans from uh, Make Something. David was uh, made a video on that. I'll leave the little card up here, I think. Yeah, that's up here, or maybe up here. It's one of these. Anyways, um, what David did in his video is he taped the uh, pieces together that he was going to cut. Now, as you can see, I've got a full shop here, but what I want to do is I want to make this using as minimal tools as possible. So I'm using a circular saw because I think everybody's got a circular saw. Or if you had to, you can use a hand saw. Not really the best. But anyways, um, yeah, this is what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be using a circular saw to cut all my pieces. So let's see if we can get this together and not screw the pooch too bad. So I'm going to tape things together now. Step what I want to do is I want to square up these ends, and I think my saw will cut through an inch and a half, no big deal. So I'm gonna take my DFM square, line it up, and square those ends up. So I'm gonna cut this at 82 inches according to the plans. If you don't have one of these little DFM squares, oh, I recommend getting one. It makes it so nice. Now, on your saw, you have two notches here, and depending on what side you line the line up, or your cutting line on, it will determine what side, what curved side of the blade you're going to cut on. So, if you line up on this side, you're going to take off a curved width. Of the 
and you'll be that short. Or you line this side, you'll be that curved width too long. So it's important that you make sure you line up what side curve, what side of the line you want to cut on to make sure that you get the actual length that you need. And I am going to cut on the inside portion of it, right there. So my saw doesn't cut all the way through two and a half inches of material. But, so what I did is I laid them out, clamped them down. You can get these clamps at Home Depot, Lowe's. Uh, Harbor Freight sells some pretty good clamps too if you're on a budget. But anyways, so I got this side lined up. And just like that, our cutting's done. Check it. In the video that David did, he used pocket holes. Um, and there's several ways you can do the pocket holes. I have two sets. I have the Armor set or the Armor Pocket Hole Jig set, which is about $140 on their website. Plus, you get some screws, which, you know, if you plan on doing a lot of pocket holes, it's a great way to do it. However, on Amazon, I'll leave a link in the description. You can get this whole entire set for $79 on Amazon, and it does everything that this does, but it doesn't take up as much space. You get the two hole pocket jig here, along with you get a, a drill bit as well as the collar and you get the really cool driver that's with it instructions but you also get a box of screws with it which if you're going to do just one project this might be the way to go or you can go to your big box store piece these all together I think um, you're looking at about a hundred and pretty close to a hundred dollars to get all of this together I also have the K4 jig as well which runs a about $99, however, it doesn't come with all the bells and whistles that this little set does. So, I'll leave it in the description down below. You do you, I'm going to do me, and I'm going to use my Craig pocket hole drink to put pocket holes in this so we can get this put together. So, let's get started. Now, set up the Craig pocket jig, and you guys really can't see it, but they've got, they got um, increments here marked off and there's an arrow that goes all the way across. So what you want to do is you just want to line up the, the size material that you're using. I'm using three quarters, so like this one. You got it set up for three quarter. Slide your clamp in here. Got that. Now, on your, in your jig, in your box, you have increments marked off to match the increments here. So, what I want to do is, since the last time I used this, I was using inch and a quarter stuff, I need to scooch this down, scooch the collar down to uh, three quarter, three quarter, lock it down into place. Again, this kit comes with everything you need to do pocket holes. Alright, so now we got the first piece down. I'll walk you through what I did. Measured out at 82 inches. Take my handy dandy little speed square. Link in the description. Again, lining up the saw right there so that I can get a nice straight cut. All right, so, here's the deal. I have, whoa! All right, so here's the deal. I broke this somehow. Looks like it tried to be get fixed. But, it's going on the inside, but I still want to make sure it's, it's, it's done. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a little bit of Starbond. Link in the description for a Starbond, because we are now Starbond affiliates. Anything you use, anything you buy with that affiliate, that, uh, that code, we get a little bit of, 
kick back on that. So put a little bit of Starbond thick set on there. Hit the other piece with some activator. Line it up. One more activator. There we go. It's set. From a glimpse inside says this is probably one of the most important tools you can have in your shop next to a miter saw. So there's some there's some starbond. Get you some. I'm not here that I'm gonna fill in with some starbond. So it doesn't fall out on me. Ah, starbond, good stuff. Alright, so as you can see, I've got the base done here. I've also got the bed board here done. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my plywood, I'm going to stack them together in the stack of three. I'm going to cut, them, cut all three of them at the same time because my saw will cut them all at the same time. So I can get them right at 82 inches because that's how long it is from that end to this end. And then we'll go to put in the sides on. Anyways, let's get started. So the side rails are cut. Now I'm going to put the pocket screws in. I, you know, I can show you how to do the pocket screws because we've already gone over that in the, earlier in the video. So I'm going to go ahead and get back to you when I've got them all put together because it's just going to go together just like it did it, like everything else. Screws and pocket screws. So I'll see you back here in a, in a few. All right. Welcome back. As you can see, I've got it all put together. I'm going to do a quick little sand on it and then uh, I'm going to prime it. I'm going to fix some uh, some knots here. I might use some Starbond. I might use some uh, um, Bondo because i got some spots right here that are actually falling out. So may do that. I don't know. We'll figure it out. You'll see in the video what's going on. But anyways, I'm a wrap for tonight. Yeah. It's a pretty, pretty productive day if I do say so myself. So, it's got a kind of a sharp edge here on this wood. There's three ways we can do it. We can use a power sander, hand sander, four ways actually. You can use the power sander, hand sander, router, or a plane. Not everybody's got a plane in their shop, not everybody's got a router in their shop. Not everybody's got a power sander in their shop. But, they do have sandpaper and they do have a hand. I picked this up at Clean Sport. It's really cool. I'll leave a link in the description. But anyways, I just put a little 80 grit sandpaper on it. Run it down the edge. Nice and easy. And it knocks the edge off. So now it's not quite so sharp. So I'm going to do that the rest of the run all the way around the table, or all the way around the bed, inside the lip, as well as on the outside. And I'm also going to hit the corners. Got the sanding done. Right at the edges over hand sander wise. Um, love how it turned out. Now we're going to paint it with some Feral Calhoun green paint because that's what the boy wanted. Probably wondering why I'm painting this green. Well, you'll see when the, when the reveal comes because the boy's room is green. What an amazing build this was. I only used a handful of tools. I used a skill saw and a drill and my Craig pocket hole screw system that I'll leave in the link in the description and I tell you what man it is amazing what you can do with a skill saw I show you three different ways to cut the wood uh, the plywood down using a ex very expensive uh, track system or all the way down to a simple DIY track system that I made out of quarter inch plywood uh, and you know you can do this and I wanted to show so that you can build a piece of furniture that's going to withstand an 11 year old boy just using pocket hole screws, skill saw, and a cordless drill. Anyways, if it's your first time here and you think I've earned it, subscribe button, ring that bell next to it, and then uh, I think YouTube's going to leave a video up here that you like, I'm going to leave a video down here that you like, and if you still haven't hit that subscribe button, it'll be right there.